going back and forth on whether I should do an epic spoiler review on Avengers Endgame. Because it was so much to take in and from so many different layers, I think they did a, a, such a beautiful job. And it was a great send-off to the 11 years, I want to say, and 22 films that have been put together during that span to have this epic payoff. I read the spoilers before I went to the theater, and I still was uh, over-pleased and even more excited when I got there. And the first reaction that I have right now is the fact that it was a three-hour movie, but it did not feel like three hours. And I think anybody that goes to the movies understands that, man, three hours with 20-minute trailers can be a bit of a challenge. And I just didn't feel that way whatsoever. I felt as if things went smooth everything went well and it was the way it started off the movie it was a continuation of infinity wars basically they lost their recouping and then they get whatever superheroes are left including iron man and nebula which were stuck on another planet captain marvel came in to bring them back to earth and they went ahead and found thanos after the fact and he did not look good at all. He looked like he was definitely damaged uh, from the power of the Infinity Gauntlet and all of the stones. But needless to say, he didn't have or nor did he care to fight at that time. Once he accomplished his destiny, he was like, well, I'm good. I'm just here in the farm hopping on one leg. One of my arms is all messed up. But yeah, I'm just living life, man. I ain't going back and forth with y'all. That, that, that was how he was. And needless to say, he had an answer for the things that had happened in Infinity Wars and on Earth and the things that he did with the snap. And he was like, look, I had to do what I had to do, bro. And next thing you know, <laughs> Thanos chops off his head. So in the first 15 minutes, you basically get the continuation of Infinity Wars because it ended up being, yeah, Thanos got killed, but he did what he ended up doing. So now after that happened, after that event where the remaining Avengers went to see him in another planet, went to chop his head off, because they were trying to get the Infinity Stones. They were trying to say, well, let's go get the stones back and just get them from Thanos. And Nebula, which is one of his adopted daughters, knew where he was going to be. So they ended up going up there and nothing was there. And they just, Thor just said, let me just finish the job here, chop, chop. But nothing was accomplished. So the movie fast forwarded after that event to five years later. Meaning five years later after that event, no one's come back. They weren't able to find the Infinity Stones. They basically had to take that loss. And if you think about it from this perspective is many of these superhero movies that we see, you have some sort of adversity but at the end the heroes the good guys figure it out every time and this was something to marvel at because it was just letting everyone know hey man the avengers lost they did not win even if they found thanos they're not able to fix the situation and they were shown in different levels you have black widow commanding some of the avengers as far as finding i want to say they were trying to look for Hawkeye and or just other things that were going on there's some vigilante stuff that was happening around the world that they wanted to get to the bottom of uh, when Captain America became a, a counselor <laughs> to people just basically telling them hey move on yeah it's tough but he's everlasting optimist uh, Iron Man ended up going to a cabin it, it seemed like somewhere out in the woods I don't know where that was but he was out there with Pepper and they were just living together, just minding their business. And <laughs> and, it, and he, they had a kid. They had a little girl together. So that was pretty awesome. The Hulk, Bruce Banner, ended up turning into Professor Hulk. And what does that mean? It's a combination of the Hulk, but having the conscience. So he was CGI, and it looked really good. But it was Bruce Banner as the, the Hulk. As we all know, or the... The people that follow the comics understand that Professor Banner is the combination of both. And that's what he became. It was just a very awesome thing to see them 
trying to pick up the pieces as far as from the aftermath. And I think for a lot of the general fans are not going to be excited about that part because it was really slow for an hour, but I felt it was needed because it showed you the pain and how different characters ended up dealing with the defeat. It wasn't easy, and they let it be known, and there was still a lot of conflict. But what happens is at that point, Ant-Man comes back. Ant-Man was in the quantum realm. And if you know anything about the prior movies and just following this whole series of things that have been happening with Marvel, in the Ant-Man movies, they stumble upon the quantum realm. And that's basically an ability to travel in time. And he was stuck in it when Thanos snapped his fingers. But five years later, he was able to find his way out, which he did. Awesome. And when he found out that, okay, all this stuff happened, he went looking for the remaining Avengers. He went to the headquarters or wherever the Avengers were. And he said, hey, man. I think I figured this out. I figured out what we can do is go back in time. And after some description about that whole element of going back to the future or going back to the past, uh, they went ahead and made that sales pitch uh, to Tony because to Bruce, to all the remaining Avengers. And a couple of them were like, whatever, I'm not going for that. <coughs> Including Tony. And Tony didn't want to jump on board because he had a little girl. He was being a dad. He was loving life as it was. But then he realized that I won't be able to go to sleep knowing that I never gave this a shot again to make things right. And that went ahead and just started things all over again because as the Avengers were trying to do things without Tony Stark, he ended up showing up. He found a solution. He helped everyone out. And the game plan became that the, the remaining Avengers were going to go back in time to all the other movies that we've seen and... Pick out the stones before Thanos does. That was the game plan. And go ahead and get the stones, and then they do their snap, and then they go ahead and fix everything because of the time travel. So they ended up, different Avengers ended up going to different timelines. So, for example, the Battle of New York, which was the first Avengers movie, Captain America, Iron Man, Ant-Man, and the Hulk. They ended up going there, four guys, because... During that time span, there were three Infinity Stones in New York City. So the Hulk went to get one. Uh, Captain America went to get another one. And then Iron Man and Ant-Man went to get the third one. And it almost worked out. They got two out of the three. And the one thing about time traveling that they figured out was that they only had enough juice. Hank is called, it was called the Hank Pym Juice. They, they could only have enough juice to do one round trip. That was it. They didn't have no more. So they had to basically have everything go in one shot. Cool. And when that failed in New York, Captain America and Iron Man, Iron Man, Tony Stark said, you know what? I got an idea because we failed. And Loki ended up leaving with the Tesseract. And so imagine this. In the Avengers movie that you saw many years ago, they capture Loki, they handcuff him, right? Thor's there. And all of a sudden, because the Avenger Tony Starks and Ant-Man come back to that timeline, you ain't able to see a little extra footage from that movie after the fact. And that's what I loved about it. And I was talking to Slow P about this because that's, I think, what made the movie epic because all of these characters went back into the vault of the movies that were created and it was like a different angle so when you see in the battle of new york hulk professor hulk is seeing the angry hulk and he's like oh man i was like that damn and and conversely you had um the the person from dr strange the one the, the bald headed lady she was fighting off some of the things that were going on in new york but you didn't see that because the avengers movie it didn't focus on any characters from Doctor Strange, but she was out there just defending the temple, defending the stone. It was pretty awesome to me. I was like, wow. So all these different things were interlapping at the same time. and But they ended up failing, and Loki escaped with the Tesseract. The Hulk was talking to the Ancient One about getting the Time Stone, and she, he talked her into it because he had to explain to her, listen, I don't know what the deal was with Doctor Strange, but he gave us, or he gave Thanos, the Time Stone. And she was like, he did? 
So he must know something that I don't. And she went at, after some battling, not battling, but she went ahead and took the soul out of his body, which is pretty awesome, man. I, I, I Again, I mean, I just, you know, I disagree with Slow P on this one where he said that it wasn't, it was good, but it wasn't even a top five. And I just think if you analyze that movie and, and everything that I'm going to talk about, everything that I discuss in this movie, it, it interlaps with the prior movies. So just think about this. The characters, uh, the, the scenes, prior movies, everything interlaps. I'm all about the payoff. I'm all about not disregarding what has gotten you to this point. And they made sure of that. They made sure that we didn't forget about the Battle of New York. We didn't forget about the Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, and I, But anyway, I'll go into that later. But I see you see what I'm saying? I'm just taking so much stuff in because it was so amazing how they put that all together. So in the Battle of New York... They were only able to get two out of three at that time. So Tony Stark and Captain America said, you know what? We're going to go even more back in time. And what happened was they ended up going to the 1970s. They ended up going to the back, back to the Captain America time. Tony Stark knew, okay, I know where it's at. I know what's happening, where it's at. And these are the coordinates. And they ended up traveling Captain America and Tony Stark back to the 70s where Iron Man met his dad. And was talking to his dad. And that was so amazing to see Howard Stark talking to Tony Stark. And it was a weird but awesome thing. Like, wow, look at this. The Starks are talking to each other. They have that dialogue. And then Captain America is definitely reminiscent about Peggy Carter. Because as they're in that base, he sees her. He stares at her. And he's always thought about coming back and having that last dance with her like he always said in the beginning right before he went into the ice age and and frozen there for 45 years and they ended up getting the third infinity stone or the you know the, whatever you want to call it but it will so they ended up so that was a successful venture for those avengers in that one and then they ended up going to and then the first death happened when you had to search for the soul stone if you remember that that was the one where they were on top of the mountain where Thanos had to sacrifice Gamora to get the stone. So in this one, it was Hawkeye and Black Widow. And, you know, Hawkeye, in the very beginning of the movie, he was with his family shooting bow and arrow. He had an ankle bracelet, so, he, you know, he was on probation. And all of a sudden, his family disappears. And then I just snaps him, and then he goes on a world crusade of aka punisher of kind of getting rid of the bad blood right so he ended up going with black widow to that planet where one person had to be sacrificed over the other that's just the deal that's the way it works and they ended up having a fight and that was the weird thing because ronin which is Hawkeye. Shout out to Jeremy Renner, by the way. I think the character Hawkeye got his due. For all the slack that he got in Avengers 1, which included myself, I think they paid proper homage to the character, and he did himself very good. So I think congratulations to Jeremy Renner on that successful performance for himself and the character. I don't think anybody can complain about Hawkeye being an issue going forward. All right? So he, they ended up fighting on top to see who was going to kill themselves. Black Widow, they did because they both were willing to do it, but they just felt they had more justification than the other person. But it was a pretty cool fight. But at the end, Black Widow ended up going down reluctantly, reluctantly. And it was like, wow, they just did a great job with that. And Hawkeye ended up coming back with the Soul Stone. Then you had Thor. And Thor and, and Raccoon, uh, what's his name, Rocket? Yeah, those guys from the Guardians of the Galaxy. The Raccoon and Thor. And, you know, Thor, one of the things that happened with Thor was he was living on Earth with the rest of our Guardians, but he was just, he became a person that had a big belly, out of shape, long beard. He was just a mess. Playing Fortnite, he didn't give a fuck, right? He just figured, man, I'm done. I'm done, I failed, and he's 
very reluctant about jumping on board, but he ended up helping the other Avengers, going back to the timeline and getting back the power orb, which was the one, if you remember, in Thor The Dark World, where Natalie Portman, uh, she ended up coming back. Natalie Portman ended up coming back and playing a part, which, remember, she ended up not coming back because of some financial differences. So the one thing I was recognizing in this movie was that everybody that was left out with the exception of uh, the light-skinned dude uh, because obviously he couldn't play it everybody came back everyone got a, a check and, and they were able to, to play a little bit of a part but natalie portman portman was playing that role if you remember in the dark world where that um the stone went ahead and it was injected in her that monster so raccoon went ahead and, and got it out of her but during that time thor talked to his mother and if you remember, his mother passed away in the movie, and she basically gave him some words of encouragement. Again, this whole movie just kept tying up some old stuff, some things that maybe um, it, it was like, uh, it just felt, oh my God, it just felt so amazing to see that connection happen when Thor met his mom once again, and he knew what was going to happen to her, and she just told him, look, Whatever happens in this timeline, I understand. I'm going to deal with it. You got to go back to yours and do your thing. And But that was a very successful end, ending there with them getting back that power stone, I want to say. Oh, which one was it? I, I don't know. It was the red one. So you already had Captain America and company in New York doing their thing. Hawkeye got the soul stone. Then we went ahead and, and got the red stone over with Thor and Raccoon and then the next group that went together was um, this guy gosh um, War Machine and Gam not Gamora but Nebula and Nebula if you remember anything about the movie is the blue character she's a female blue in Guardians of the Galaxy and she's very evil she looks like a cyborg and she had, they, they, so they both ended up going after the, the power one the purple one and sure enough, it was so hilarious because they run into Peter Quill, which is the leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy. And they kicked his ass pretty quickly. I was like, oh, boy, that, that was not a problem. And they ended up getting the Power Stone, so the purple one. And But that the thing in the process of getting the purple one was that Nebula, because she's a cyborg, her memory is able to record. And what happened was that when she went back in time, the nebula of the future ended up going back in time. The the one that was there already was able to have the same memories that the one in the future had. So all of a sudden you saw Nebula from the past get these like breakdowns, like these big migraine headaches, and then Thanos was like, Okay, what's up here? What's going on? Because they were all together looking for the stones. And at that time, Thanos had none of them. He had none of them, and he was searching for them with Nebula, with Gamora. And all of a sudden, he's like, okay, what, what's what's up, dear child? And and they go do some research and pick her brain. And sure enough, uh, they find out that he dies in another timeline and that he did what he had to do. And, but he realized that the Avengers from that timeline were going back in time and getting all the stones. They knew they were there at. And what the nebula of the past did was, listen, give me a chance. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we're in the running on this. And I'm going to go ahead and, and make this right. Because obviously the Gamora of the future ended up turning a new page and being a good person. So Thanos was like, okay, let's uh, see you do this work. So, at the end, everybody ended up getting all of the Infinity Stones. So, the thing of, of traveling back in time was a beautiful aspect, in my opinion, because it tied up a lot of loose ends, man. It really, it, it was just so amazing because it just felt like when I was watching that part in the Avengers, where after the fact, it was like, oh, this is Avengers one and a half, or... When you saw Thor talking to his mom, I was like, oh, okay, this is like an extended scene of the movie because it was all in continuation of what was happening in that movie. Like, the Russo brothers didn't mess up what happened in those movies in those past, right? They didn't. They, they made sure that 
Iron Stark didn't see, Tony Stark didn't see himself, or the Captain America didn't see himself, ooh, I got to go back. I got to rewind a little bit because <laughs> in the Battle of New York, when I told, I talked about the foursome, uh, Captain America, Iron Man, Hulk, and Ant-Man ended up going back as Captain America is walking away with one of the items the Captain America from the past <laughs> he sees him and he goes hey man I got Loki here on the 14th floor <laughs> and Captain America is saying no dude like I'm, I'm Captain America bro like we're, we're the same and they go at it it's fucking amazing man I, it, it's just so many different things to take in as I'm talking because it, it oh my gosh it's so freaking amazing and in that even in that battle of New York after they comprehended Loki and they were taking him in there was a little bit of a battle of who's gonna get the test rack and uh, and uh, the other weapon that Loki had and Captain America follows Hydra people the people from Hydra that he fought in Winter Soldier in the elevator there ended up being in a similar exact scene when Captain America gets in the elevator with all the Hydra people. And I'm thinking, oh, snap, this is about to go down again, right? Because he's trying to get the test rack and he's telling the group, hey, listen, man, I got orders to, to make sure this thing gets handled. And, they, and they're like, no, no way. That's not what we got. And he goes, no, 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 I, we do. Hail Hydra. <laughs> Instead of fighting them, he just said to the guy, Hail Hydra, because we know that in Winter Soldier, that's what he finds out. He finds out that the people that he was working for, S.H.I.E.L.D., ended up being Hydra. So that was, a, that was again, this is all epic stuff going down as far as tying up other movies and bringing them into play. I, I, I just thought it was so incredible from that perspective. So... Again, so going back, fast forwarding here, they, all the Avengers were able to get all of the stones. They, what took uh, Thanos to do so long, they were able to do very quickly because they knew exactly where all the stones were at. So when they bring them back, then Tony Stark creates a gauntlet of his own. Um, and, and that gauntlet, obviously, uh, was able to handle all of the stones. And the concern was that whoever wielded the gauntlet had to be powerful enough because when they fought Thanos and they killed him pretty quickly, he was damaged from snapping his fingers. Uh, half of his face was burnt off. He was limping around, like I said earlier, and his arm was not working because of the power of him wielding the gauntlet uh, caused those ramifications. So everybody knew that there. And initially, Thor said, no, you know, it's going to be me. I'm going to handle this. I, I, I'm a god. And the Hulk says, no, nah, it's got to be me. So after much discussions, Hulk ended up being the one that wielded the gauntlet and snapped everything back. And what happened was, as he snapped it back, it worked. He was able to snap everyone back. But the problem was that the nebula that came back to the future was the evil one they played the okie dokie so the the evil plan of thanos was okay these motherfuckers are finding where all the stones are at. they're gonna do all the work for me let me send back evil nebula back to the future and have her jump me in there and take all the stones and call it a day and that's exactly what happened as as hulk went ahead and snapped his fingers and he you knew that people were coming back because Hawkeye's wife called him right away after he snapped the, the gauntlet his wife called him. he picked up the phone and sure enough it was her but there was no room for celebration because Thanos came in with his spaceship and was knocking everything out into oblivion he was and I think that was um, the beginning of the epic epic battle that we had in play at the very end and I felt that um, it, it was something to marvel at because the, the thing I always go back to with this is that you got to understand this is a culmination of 22 movies and for them to put the package together like they did 
and to be able to, to have so many characters moving in so many different directions, showcasing all of our, uh, our favorite movie moments, and on top of that, the skill set and the powers of people, it's a very hard thing to do. And it was done on a, such a grand scale because I thought Civil War did a great job. But this was even on another level that it, I just don't think that it's ever going to be duplicated. I don't think I'll see anything in my lifetime as good as this and other movie theaters and not movie theaters but other movie companies are going to try to figure out how they're going to top this because this is never going to happen again in my lifetime and so nevertheless you have this big battle because Thanos was brought back into the future with his army with the Black Order and they were just basically saying well we got the gauntlet here we got all the stones let's go to war and he brought everybody with him but the one thing that happened was that as some of the Avengers are fighting, and in this particular case, Thanos, they're fighting Thanos, the main three, Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America, while the other ones are fighting through the rummage and trying to escape and, and trying to just kind of hold on to the gauntlet. There's just various things going on, but the main three go to battle with Thanos. And the one thing about Thanos is that, if you remember that, the, the three that he battled, those are the three that had a fight in the first Avengers movie. So here they are in the first Avengers movie. They had a personal squabble, meaning Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor, if you remember, where I think Thor was coming in, trying to take Loki back with him. And then Iron Man was like, nah, it's not going to happen. And all of a sudden, Jam Captain America jumped off the plane with a parachute, and they all fought. So it was very ironic how the, all three of them went ahead and got together at the end to fight Thanos minus the infinity stones so that was amazing to me to see thanos go to war and the boys getting together and the one cool thing that uh, thor did <laughs> he did and it was so cool he brought his hammer back from the past if you remember one of the movies thor ragnarok his sister went ahead and destroyed Mo mojoner that, i don't know that's how it's how mojoner whatever it's called right the hammer and it was gone. So he had to create Stormbreaker, which was the one that was used in Infinity Wars. Well, he was fighting with the, both Stormbreaker and Mojona. <laughs> and that was so awesome that he brought it back from the past and went ahead and was fighting Thanos. And Thanos was still doing damage. Thanos is a bad mamma jamma, man. He, he definitely, he's a warrior through and through. And the one thing that was very evident to me was that these guys, one on one, no one can beat him one on one, no doubt about it. There's no, not even Captain Marvel can beat him one on one, in my opinion. Anyway, I just don't. I mean, she she's very powerful, and but once he had the power stone, uh, anyway. But I, 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 as you can see, I'm blabbing all over the place, so I'm trying to keep the story together because this is a spoiler review. So nevertheless, he, Thanos comes in. He starts looking for the gauntlet with the stones. It's basically his job done. And as the moment as it seems like he's getting closer to getting it, all of a sudden, all the Avengers were coming back. Because, like I said earlier, when Hulk snapped his finger, he ended up bringing everyone back. But it wasn't something that was done right away. Doctor Strange ended up connecting everybody and being there at the battlefield. So you had a great epic battle with all the Avengers and all of the people of Thanos' realm. Now, the cool thing about that fight, before that fight, was, like I said earlier, Thor had Stormbreaker and he had Mojoner. And Captain America wielded the hammer. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. That If you remember in the movies, when Thor was telling somebody, only you can be worthy, only one can be worthy of that's truly honorable can wield that hammer and captain america was was not able to and i think that i, I don't know why it happened but he all of a sudden he was able to wield it and he put up a good battle but again thanos is something else to marvel at i mean he really is and they couldn't hang but again the, the, the cavalry was called in and it was done in a very cool way and then you see all the avengers everybody everybody that you know 
that was in any, any hero in any way, shape, or form was fighting against Thanos people. And it was just kind of one of those, everyone showcasing their skills, very beautifully done. And at the end, it, it became to a last battle. Through everybody that he was battling, it came back to him and Iron Man, like it was in Infinity Wars. And this time around, Tony got the best of him. Tony went ahead and got the stones, and he finished the job. And like I said before, when whoever was wielding that stone, uh, unfortunately, has some major ramifications to deal with, which they were able to say throughout the movie, with Thanos showing him how debilitated he was, and then showing Hulk, he definitely wasn't the same when it came to that. And for me, I was very disappointed with Hulk in Infinity Wars, and while I thought that he didn't showcase much in Endgame, I felt... Oh my god, I'm yawning, man. It's like, because I'm driving late from the movie, but Professor Hulk in Endgame was the best personality. I think he was the best person, the humor, and everything. I don't think he showcased any of his power, really, but he was more of Dr. Banner in the Hulk body. And it was very cool to just see all of that display. But at the end, Tony Stark's had to say, I am Iron Man, and snapped his fingers and went ahead and made everything right again. But unfortunately, he was another Avenger that went down for the count, meaning the two people that died was Black Widow when she had to sacrifice herself for the Soul Stone. And you had Tony Stark snap the fingers to, and it just was too powerful for him to handle Another cool thing was Pepper Potts, which was his wife, got on the iron suit herself, man. She got her own version of it, and it was pretty badass, man. I, I just loved it, man. I, I loved it, and at the end, uh, everyone was mourning the loss of Tony. You saw a hologram. If you remember that part in the movie where he was, uh, which movie was it? He was uh, manipulating images of his parents. Gosh, was that that was Civil War? I want to say in Civil War when he was trying to create like holograms of people from the past. So he had that for his family, for his loved ones, and they were all just watching him talk after he was dead about making things work and, and the impact that he wanted to make in humanity and help people all together. And I think that's just the way they left it very beautifully. But then we still have one more problem because throughout the movie. The thing that you were being told was the Infinity Stones can be used. But in order not to mess up the other timelines of other things, they had to be put back in their respective timelines. Wherever they were found, you have to put them back so that everybody is good. Captain America went ahead and was the one that ended up taking that job. He said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish the job, meaning go ahead, set everybody up and make sure that all the stones are back where they belong and go from there cool one problem though he comes back as an old man and what captain america did was when he went back earlier in the movie to see to get the, the one of the stones and he saw peggy carter he said you know what i'm gonna go back there and stay there and what happened was he ended up getting old with her he didn't go into details about it, but he brought back his shield and he had his man, Sam Wilson, which is, uh, as we all know, um, what's his name? I'm just so half tired, man, but so excited. Uh, I, I, the Falcon. Falcon, he was talking to Falcon. Him, Bucky, and Falcon were all talking. And he tells Sam, listen, you're worthy of this shield, brother. And I know people are going to be like, well, the black guy gets it. You know, there's some people that don't understand the comics, but Sam Wilson and Bucky do wield the shield. They do They do have their moments where they take the mantle as Captain America, respectively. So I, I knew that was going to happen. I don't know which one it was going to be. I don't know if it was going to be Falcon or Bucky, but both of them definitely have carried the Captain America mantle. And Captain America just said, yo, I'm old. I'm living life. You know, I lived my life. It was beautiful. And... Here you go, Sam. Wield that shield, brother. That's your thing for you to hold. Take care of it. 
and uh, do me proud. And that's the way they left it, you know. And at the end, they just show Captain America dancing with Peggy, finally kissing her, calling it a day, and everything was put together happily ever after. And right now, um, it, it, it was just so many different parts. And I, I'll, I'll leave with this because, gosh, I could just keep rambling about this movie because there were just so many things that were intertwining. But during the epic battle at the end, Doctor Strange... Uh, and Tony were talking and, and then Tony asked him hey Doctor Strange is this the scenario that you saw that we saw that, that we ended up winning is this it Doctor Strange goes I can't tell you because if I tell you it won't happen so at the end it was that that's when I knew Tony was gonna go even though I knew the spoiler was happening I knew at that moment when he told him, look, I got to, you're going to, I can't tell you because if I do, it ain't going to happen. I, I'm like, well, yeah, that's a foreshadowing, man. You got to take that loss. But I hope that everybody that goes out there and sees it, enjoys it. I think it's a beautiful movie uh, for a comic book guy like myself. Obviously, it deviated some ways from the, the, the things that you read in the comics and from the things you watch. But as far as from YouTube and, and being able to refresh you on the comics, but it was a, a, a very beautiful send-off. And I think for all of us that grew up watching all of these movies and enjoying them, I think that looking back, it's going to be an amazing journey. But kudos to the Russos. I mean, they are, in my opinion, they can't do no wrong. They've done such a great job with everything. And needless to say, I'm, I can't sing their praises enough. It's a beautiful movie, beautiful ending. And I'm looking forward to seeing what more will have to store.